All right, so let's go through these. Let's continue on what we did on Friday and go through these problems. Well, we're going to try to find the composite function and evaluate the composite function at specific values, such as 12 and 9. And we're also going to deal with composite functions more in more general terms, where we just find the composite by plugging them in and leaving the x in in more general terms. Okay, so let's take a look at 3, 5, 11, and 17. I only asked you to do 1 through 10, or at least attempt 1 through 10. After I get through these, we'll see if there are any questions. We're, it's going to take us till the end of the week probably to really get a decent grasp of this, especially since this week is going to be completely butchered with everything that's going on. Right, we have a two-hour delay on Wednesday, and then no school on Monday. I'm like, how many more of these do we need? Okay, so... Bear with me while we get, my goal is to try to get this done by the end of the week, but eh, who knows. So, we have two functions here, the f of x function and the g of x function. The f of x function is 4x minus 3, and the g of x function is x, the square root of x minus 8. Again, composite functions is exactly like it sounds. You're composing a function inside of another function, and you get a new function, right? It's a whole different function. Now, in 3 and 5, we're evaluating these composite functions at specific values. That means, in order to do this, first one right here, I need to know what g of 12 is. We always start with the innermost function and build out. It's that innermost function that's being plugged into the outermost, right? So, in order to figure out what we are going to plug into f of x, we need to know what g of 12 is. So we need to, and we're going to take the f of g of 12 first, and we need to find out what g of 12 is. Now, what does that mean? What do I have to do to find out what g of 12 is equivalent to? Plug 12 into the g of x function. Yeah, plug 12 into the g of x function. Now, the g of x function is the square root of x minus 8, and we're plugging 12 in place of 8 because in this one we have a 12 here, in this one we have x here. So we're substituting that 12 in place of the x because we substituted the 12 in place of x here. So it becomes the square root of 12 minus 8, which is the square root of 4, right? Which is what? 2. two. Plus or minus 2, yes, but we're going to take the positive, okay? Now, so g of 12 is equivalent to 2. We know that now, right? That makes it easier to plug that into my f. What do I plug into my f now? Two. two, because that's what g of 12 is equivalent to. So now we're going to find out what g or f of 2 is, which is the same thing as f of g of 12, because we know g of 12 is equivalent to 2. So what do I do now? I plug the 2 in my f function in place of the x, right? Because this is now in place of that x. So I end up with 4 times 2 minus 3. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 3 is 5. So my f of g of 12 is equal to 5. That's your answer to the f of g of 12. Does that make any sense? Hopefully that makes more sense than it did on Friday. Because I know on Friday it probably was a little confusing, but... As we go through this more and more and more, it'll become easier and easier and easier. Now, the second part here, we have to do the g of f of 9. In order to do the g of f of 9, I need to first find out what f of 9 is, the innermost function right now. I need to evaluate the innermost function at 9 instead of x. So, what do we have to do here? Plug in 9 in the f of x. So we get 4 times 9 minus 3. What's 4 times 9? 36. So we have 36 minus 3, which is 33. So my f of 9 is equal to 33. Now what do I do with that f of 9? Plug it into your outermost function, which is the g of x. So now we get g of 9 or g of f of 9 are the same thing because we know f of 9 is equal to, or 33, sorry, g of 33. All right. 
Because we know f of 9 is equivalent to 33 because we just solved that. So now we've got to plug 33 into my g of x function in place of x and evaluate it. So we get the square root of 33 minus 8, which is equal to what? The square root of 25, which is equal to what? So my g of f of 9 is equivalent to 5. Does that make sense? Evaluating the composite functions. Okay. It's a little bit easier than these right here and a little bit less complex, especially as we get to the higher complexity composite fun general composite functions. Okay. So let's take a look now at number five. We can do three and five, and we're starting to get a better idea of that. The rest of this is going to kind of fall into place. So let's take a look at number 5. We have f of x is equal to the negative 2x plus 1. g of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus 13. We need to do the f of g of 7 first. So f of g of 7. In order to do that, in order to evaluate the fu f function at g of 7, I need to know what the innermost is equal to. So I need to know what g of 7 is equal to. I'm given the g function, I just need to plug in 7 for it and go from there. So we end up with the square root of, well, what's 7 squared? 49 minus 13, which is? Square root of 36, which is equivalent to? 6. So we know g of 7 is equal to 6, which means we can plug that 6, or g of 7, into f and get our final composite function. So we will be plugging in, no, oh, can't write today, it's Monday. Okay, f of 6. So we have to evaluate the f function when x is equal to 6, so we just plug that in and we get plus 1 is equal to what? Negative 12 plus 1 is equal to negative 11, right? So that means the f of g of 7 is equivalent to negative 11. Okay? Any questions on that? Now let's do the second half of this, and then let's build into a little bit more complex ones and deal with more general terms. And then we'll talk about how to deal with it when we have three that we have to work with. And eventually, we're going to talk about the domain of these. Alright? Once we get this assignment done, we're going to talk about domain, and that's, that's when things can get a little tricky. But we will uh, dive into that probably on Wednesday or maybe tomorrow. Uh, so now we have g of f of negative 3, so g of f of negative 3. In order to do that, we must know what the f of negative 3 is equivalent to. So we know what to plug into g. So f of negative 3, we plug negative 3 into my f function. So we get negative 2 times negative 3 plus 1. What do we get here? So we end up getting negative or positive 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So my f of negative 3 is equal to 7. Does that make sense? So now what do we do with that? Plug that into my g function, correct? So we have g of f of negative 3, which is equivalent to g of 7, which means we plug that 7 into my g function. We end up getting 49 minus 13, or the square root of 36, which is equal to 6. So my g of f of negative 3 is equal to 6. All right? Any questions on those two? Do we have any questions on any of those like this? I mean, this. Do we understand at least the process behind it? All right. Now, let's take a look at number 11 here. Did we do number 11 already? I didn't think we did. I think we might have done five already, but that's all right. All right. All right. 
So, number 11 now. We have f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. Uh, g of x is equal to x squared plus 1. And we need to find f of g of x and g of f of x. So that means, in these we do not have a point at which we're evaluating it at, right? So all we're doing is taking whatever g of x is and plugging it into f of x, and we're getting a, a function back, a general function back, not a number like we got here. We're getting numbers here because we're evaluating these composite functions at a specific value. Here we're not. So you're going to get another function in return. So if we look at the f of g of x, in order to do this, we again need to know what g of x is equivalent to. Here, we had to evaluate that to figure that out. Here, we're already given it. What is g of x equivalent to here? x squared plus, x squared plus 1. Very good. Now, since I know what g of x is equivalent to, I take that in innermost function and plug it into my f function in place of x. So I'll be substituting it right into there. So I will really be evaluating or doing and finding the composite function of f of x squared plus 1, which is the same thing as f of g of x, which means I take this and plug in my x squared plus 1. 2 times x squared plus 1 minus 1. And then all we got to do is simplify, right? So now we're going to get f of g of x equivalent to what? Distribute 2x squared plus 2 minus 1, which means my f of g of x is equal to what? Because we can collect those two. That right there is my final answer. Does that make sense? Okay. In order to do composite, we need to know what we're inputting in to our outside function. That, in this case, is whatever the g of x is, which in this case is x squared plus 1. So we're inputting <laughs> x squared plus 1 into my f of x function and composing the two together. Okay. Now, let's go the other way, the g of f of x. Now, again, your g of f of x is not going to necessarily be the same answer. Sometimes it might, but it's not going to necessarily be the same answer here. So we have to be very careful of that. So now let's go g of f of x. In order to do g of f of x, you look at your innermost function, which is my f of x. It's inside of the other function, composed inside of the other function. Do we know what f of x is equivalent to? Yeah, we do, 2x minus 1. So that means I'm taking this f of x or 2x minus 1 and plugging it into my g function. So I'm really going to do g of 2x minus 1. And again, normally g of x is in terms of x, but now I'm going to put it in terms of 2x minus 1. So that means I'm plugging this into my x squared and my g of x. So I end up getting the quantity 2x minus 1 squared plus 1. Well, to do this, we have to be very careful. Here is a common mistake. You do not just square this and get 4x squared and square that and get positive 1. Your answer is not 4x squared plus 1. 100% guarantee I'm going to have at least 5 or 6 answers like that, even though we went over. Because that's a, that's a common mistake. Get away from that. What does it mean to square something? You take the quantity inside of it, which is 2x minus 1, right? You take how many of them? Two of them and multiply it together. So we actually have to expand it and then multiply it out. So now we have to FOIL it out in order to multiply these, correct? So we go first, outer, inner, last, and we get, well, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 1 times 2x is those combined to give me negative 4x. I'll just skip that step there because I'm running out of room here. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then we have a plus 1 at the end, right? Now all we have to do is finish this off. 4x squared minus 4x 
plus 2 is equal to my g of f of x. That's your final answer right there. That is the composite function g of f of x. It's a whole separate function, but made up of the f of x and the g of x in this case. Right? Now, does that make sense? If that makes sense, then we have to look at our three components. When we have three functions, when we're dealing with three functions, it's no different, except we always have to start at the innermost first. So if we're taking a look at number 17 here, okay, I only need a little more space on this one. If we're taking a look at number 17 here, our f of x is 2x minus 1, our g of x is equal to 3x, and our h of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Now, we want to find out the h of g of f of x. What does that mean? Where do I start? Innermost. What is the innermost in this case? Uh, innermost is the f of x. In order to do this, I need to know what f of x is. And where am I plugging the f of x into? The g of x. Then I get an answer to that, right? Like we've gotten here. And then from there, we take that answer and do what? One more time. So you're going to be plugging in two different parts into this one to get your final answer. So here we go. This is going to take a little bit and a little bit of work, and that's why you're probably going to want to use the bigger box sheets when we get to some of these. You're not going to do a ton of these, just some. Okay? On a test, there might only be one of these. All right? So that, these take a while. So I take the f of x, which is equivalent to what? 2x minus 1. We know that f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. We're given that. Plug that into where? Plug it into your g of x. So we're going to do g of f of x, or in other words, g of 2x minus 1. Now that means we're taking the 2x minus 1 and plugging it in for x and my g of x, correct? Which means I get 3 times 2x minus 1, which simplifies to what? Yes, 6x minus 3. So we know that my g of f of x is equal to 6x minus 3. Now what do we do? Because we only have this part of it right now, right? We only have that part. So now we've got to substitute this into my h of x and then simplify that and then I'm done. So I'm going to be doing the h of 6x minus 3 to finish this off. That means I'm going to take the 6x minus 3 and plug it in for x, into any x in that h of x function. So I get the quantity 6x minus 3 squared plus 1. So far so good. Okay. Now, what do I have to do here? Foil it out. So we have to write this out. It's going to be 6x minus 3 times 6x minus 3 plus 1 at the end. So now all we got to do is foil it out. 6x times 6x becomes... 6x times negative 3 is... Okay. Negative 3 times uh, 6x is what? Which gives me what? Negative 36x, and negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, right? Plus 1 is 10. I have to add that 1 at the end, okay? So now my h of g of f of x is equivalent to 36x squared minus 36x plus 10. Does that make sense? Right. Now, let's go with the last one here, which is the f of g of h of x. To do this, we must know what? What the innermost is equal to. Which one of these is the innermost? The h of x. It's all the way in the middle of it, right? It's in the center. We don't know what h of x is. We can't do this. h of x is equal to what? 
Okay, so that means I'm in G of X, I'm going to be plugging in the X squared plus 1, correct? You take the innermost, plug it into the middle one, and then get an answer, and then plug that one into the outermost. So when I do that, I get what? I'm plugging in this into the G of X, which means I get 3 times X squared plus 1, which gives me what? 3x squared plus 3. Correct? Now, that is what my g of h of x is equal to. So my g of h of x, which I just found, is now equal to 3x squared plus 3. Now I take this and do what with it? Plug that into my outermost. So now I'm going to evaluate f at 3x squared plus 3. So I get what now? Uh, well, I plug it into the 2x minus 1, and this goes in place of the x. So I get 2 times 3x squared plus 3 minus 1. And we simplify. And what do we end up getting here? 6x squared. Again, we distribute. Plus what? Minus 1, which is positive 5. So we end up getting this right here. And this is my f of g of h of x. All right? Any questions on that? Any questions on that? All right? Do we have any other questions on anything you've worked on up to this point on this assignment? Okay? Now, you're going to have work time right now to continue working on that. All right? Whatever you don't get in done in class today, we'll just work on tomorrow, and we'll just continue this. All right? Hopefully this is making a little bit more sense. Obviously, I'll be putting this video up on the website, so if you need to refer to it, please watch it, and uh, you can get these done. Okay? So let's get to work here.